Okay, people's peace and blessings. It's your boy EB, Eric Benson, man. You know, with success after lockdown. You know, we coming up on our, uh, ending our first season. Looking forward to that second season, man. At this time, I just want to thank all my supporters, you know, uh, for supporting success after lockdown. And we look forward to seeing you shortly again with our new season coming up, man. And y'all all be safe, man. And enjoy and look forward to seeing you again, man. Talking to everybody, man. Okay, welcome to another episode of Success After Lockdown or uh, under Exodus Productions. You know, we in the building today, man. To me, man, Anthony. You ready? Anthony Cologne, be ex in the building. Be ex in the building, baby. Man, you know, how was your how was your weekend, man? My weekend is always amazing. Oh, fabulous, man. Listen, listen. I wake up and I have freedom. Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> huh? That's what I'm, that's for real talk, right like there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, we got a guest today, man, brother, man. Who we got? Who we got? Brother, just coming home, <laughs> man. He just out to come out the building, man. He just came yeah. from behind that wall, man. You know. Thank Jamel, you. Man. Thank, you. Man. Thank you for having me, man. We're here to introduce him today, man, to success after lockdown, man, to society, you know, to the community, because I know he got a lot of thoughts, he got a lot of ideas, a lot of, you know, a lot of things that he, he looking forward to doing, man, to giving back to the community, helping the community, you know, and we want, to, we want him to share some things with us, man. So I'm going I'm to hand it over to Anthony, man, so he can get your background, man. Yes, 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 definitely. So thank you, my brother, for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Man, for a guy that just came home a month ago, you looking very dripping, very you, fly. Man. Uh, you know I got a good life, man. I got a good life, man. Uh, listen, that, right, that, man. that, 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 that. The blessing. That's a blessing. When you have a woman that holds you down, That's you correct, come back man. and get right back and looking right. That's correct. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I got good friends like E, and all them stay on the ranks, stay in my ear, man. What you doing? You doing positive? I'm there, baby. There, 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 you, there you go. Listen, we're going to get into some questions. Okay. Uh, like, let's just let, let everybody know who you are, where you from. <clears throat> talk, 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 talk to the audience. Well, my name is Jamel McKnight, okay. and I'm originally from Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York. BK, BK, BK in the house, BK in the house. Yes. Huh? BK, um, BX. Uh, today is actually what? I came home June twenty eighth, so I got like a I got like a month and a day in, like a month and two days probably. A day in a wake up. Yeah, a day in a sure. wake up. <laughs> and it's, it's a blessing to be out here. Freedom wake up. Yeah. Freedom. yeah. But I tell y'all, brothers, man, the reentry is so intense. So you have to be patient. You have to trust the process if you if you want to better yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want to go back to eating the yakisobi, beef gulag, back to the jail stuff. So no um, question. So like, just talk to me a little bit about your background, man. How you, you know, where you grew up at, man. Well, the streets and how was it, man? To you know, as far back as you can remember, man. Okay, well, I'm. I could go back real far. Well, my um mother used to live on Skank and Livonia out there in East New York, or whatever the case may be. And um, you know, back in '86 and '87 when crack hit, or whatever the case may be, it took my mom's. I never knew my father, so right then and there, it was like. Dreading water because the crack had her drinking stuff like that, and I had to fend for myself. So, at an early age, I was forced. To, um, it was either BCW was going to take me or my grandmother. Mm. And with, 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 with all um, God blessings, my grandmother snatched me up. And Shout took out me to the grandmas, man. man. Yeah, man. Yeah. They're always in the building for us. In the building. That's a fact. Go ahead, though. And um, when she took me in and took me to Flatbush. It's like I ain't have no uncles, cousins, or nothing. So it's like the street just swarmed me at an early age. So I find myself, and once again, I'm not glorifying this lifestyle. I, this, this is painful we even talk about because I know I need counseling for this stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I'm working on that right now. But in that hard time, I, I, I endured selling drugs, playing with guns at an early age because I didn't have the positive influences in my life to lead me in the right direction. My grandma was elderly, and um, so it's like the street just took me at an early age. So I find myself, you know, locked up in Sparfit, YDC1, mm -hmm. uh, the DFY yeah. stuff. And then at 15 years old, I had a daughter, you know, 
And three years later, I got locked up for a uh, second degree murder, um, acting in concert where somebody shot somebody seven times and testified against me saying that I gave him the weapon to do it. And I fought for 25 years to um, claim my innocence. And um, you know, at the end of the day, it's still the process is still going on. And I'm in a good position, but through that journey, I had so much like tug of playing tug of war, you know, with. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, you know. Let's talk about it, brother. We like, shed tears here. The, the, the tug of war was, is either you is going to be the product of your environment or you can change your way of thinking, you know, by taking these curriculums and these programs that they have in this, the jail situation, the, the jail institution, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be, the facility. Because I was a knucklehead. Mm -hmm. For my first 10 years, I just got in trouble, dirty errands, all type of stuff. But for the 15 years that I did, <laughs> I cleaned up by hanging out with brothers like Eric Vincent, you know what I'm saying? And of course, sir. Um, brothers that kept me in pace, Exodus. Um, I, uh, my therapeutic programs, is my, my record is extensive with that because I felt like therapeutic, self-help and therapeutic programs is what gave me the jewels that I needed to see because I was surrounded by the same environment that I was living in the street, it was in jail, drugs, Balance and all that, but what I had to balance was that man. You grown now, man. You can make a choice if you want to hang out over here and you want to do this. So I chose to be in the school building with all the brothers that was trying to do something, get these degrees and stuff like that. Yeah. And so actually, actually, before you get there, okay. um, we're cutting you okay. off. Like, just we. I'm gonna go back with you, yeah, back okay. to you know, um, the, your mother, your, okay. your, you know, that that era back there, man. Like, uh, you know, just talk a little bit about what you did. You know, to the community, in the community, you know, and what led you to, you know, to come into prison? Well, I believe um, my anger and frustration came from the lack of having a father or uncles or cousins that was going to step up and show me the way. So basically, I was just a follower um, up until I got locked up. And even when I was locked up, I was still following. So I had to wake up and smell a coffee. But what I endured was a lot of. Um, peer pressure, I would say, Absolutely. following other people and not having my own identity. Um, um, uh, I found myself playing with a lot of guns, um, thinking that I was tough. I lived the image. They called me Shorty Earhart, something that I don't live to this day. That's why my name is Jamel McKnight. I understand that's an image that I don't want to live no more. Mm -hmm. um, but when you go to Flatbush, a lot of people are still shooting that name out there. So when I came home and I had a little taste of that, I didn't want to go back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So my grandmother was right. She passed away in 08, but she said, Jamel, God bless um, you. you're not missing anything out here. These guys are still doing the same old thing. And then 25 years later, I come home. I see these guys doing the same old, same thing. So I, I, I started thinking for myself. I started saying, bro, what you going to do? You going to go back to jail or you going to start? You going to get into you going to build up your independence. You know what I'm saying? Because I never had a job. I never. um filled out any kind of paperwork or none of that. So you might as well say that I was just basically like a little kid sitting on a crate with a gun or, you know, just ready for somebody to say, yo, go get him or go do this. Mm -hmm. They didn't even tell me to go to school or nothing because I believe, you know, their whole goal was to manipulate you to do their dirty deeds. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And mm. um, yes. I'm against that today as a grandfather of three, um, a, a father of two. My daughter's 29, one is 25. And, um, and my granddaughter is 11, and my grandson is, is, is three, and I have a wife, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm trying to get down to her right now. She's in South Carolina. However, the re-entry that I'm going through led me to say that, McKnight, you got to be in New York to figure this thing out. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Nobody going to be able to hold your hands. You're going to have so, to do this by yourself. So, well, so it, it, it's been, it's been a, 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 a blessing and a curse because sometimes you want to just throw your hat down. Boom, then I call E, yo E, like, boy, you better think. What we said when we was behind our wall, we said that we would get any kind of job, a Burger King, McDonald's, we a sweet, we a mop for our freedom. And now that we got our freedom, um, what are you gonna do, go contrary to all that? So I had to go back to my memories and go back to the struggle that, Sorry. you know, that got me here today. And it's a blessing, man. I wouldn't give it up for the world. I'll take. I do everything in my power to stay out in, 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 in this world, man, because 
going back to prison is not an option. Mm. That's right, of course. That's right. So just a little bit, give me like give me one of those moments, man. That you know, back when you was that knucklehead, man. You said like, that you said you was ten years, 10, 15 yeah. years, man. I don't know the first 10, 15 years of your bit. So like, share with us some I got of the some things that, moments that, of, that, that I mean, what was that more, like? What was that like? Seeing, what was the seeing, worst the shit most you saw? Worst shit you saw, like you know, growing up in in the prison system, man, behind that wall. Well, you, you my first spot was Clinton Denimora. Mm, that's um, right. From Albany County to Clinton, Denimora, that's where I was at with E, with Eric. You know what I'm saying sure. he was working in the law library, so he the one that showed me how to shepherdize and teach. He taught me. Shout like, out to Clinton Law yeah. Library. <laughs> yeah, show me how to um, basically know what I'm in prison for because yeah, right. the charges that I had, I couldn't understand it. Second degree, the craving difference, and criminal facilitation. So if they said I rendered aid to this man, I don't. I, I couldn't understand why I was being locked up for second degree murder when I didn't kill anybody. So I really had to find out what I'm in prison for first, mm. and then. What came next is what kind of program I was going to take because in Clinton in 1998 it was real intense. You know, a lot of guys was getting all you thrown on them, um, stabbed up, cut up, you name it. It was it was it was the slums. But how I survived that was by staying around positive people and trying to do something. I was basically working on my case to try to get my exoneration out out, out to the forefront. So I had to be in the law library around guys that know how to litigate because I had no form of education to know how to do this. Right. So I had to get up under them to learn something, and it was either hanging in the yard with the dummies or going over here and trying to learn something, and it helped because those tools that I learned back in 1998, I still carry to this day, and it keeps me going. Mm. Right. Absolutely. Now, I know you just mentioned, like, yo, you, a lot of people getting burnt out on That's all right. you cut stuff. Yeah. Like, do you recall, like, one incident that was, like, that you just witnessed, and you was just like, yo, what the fuck? Um, when I first got to Clinton, I took a porter spot on long-term key block. You know, it was a um, long-term key block. And the reason why I took this is because I had a surcharge and a lot of guys told me that, you know, these guys, they like to eat. So they would put money in my account. And, you know, if you got the surcharge, they're going to take out half and you can shop with the other half. So I go shop for their food and my, I was getting my, my surcharge paid off. Um, and um, it was one particular thing dealing with some cookies or something. It was an altercation on a gate, and and they was throwing some franks. The franks is they throwing um they, they private parts at each other or whatever. So one guy said, "Yo, when I come out, I'm gonna do this." So I'm not thinking nothing of because you know I'm just coming up. I'm young. When he came out of the cell, he had like a little butcher knife, looked like a, a homemade butcher yeah, knife. Yeah, yeah. And he starts stabbing the guy, and I seen I'm looking for the officers because we all on a gate, you know, when some it was this altercation, you got to get out the way. So when the police come, mm -hmm. they don't think that you're a part of this, uh, this little thing that's yeah. going on. But I'm looking to see where the officers is at to, to help this guy. You know what I'm saying? They barricaded themselves inside the, the little office until they got some, some help. So this guy just went in on, on the other guy with the butcher knife. And that was the first incident that I seen that really had me shook up. Like when I went back in the cell and I thought, and I'm like, damn, I'm around these guys, man. These guys is really killers and murderers. And they got me in here and I ain't no murderer. I ain't no killer. I didn't hurt nobody. I played with guns and stuff like that, but it was all a little, how, how can you say it? Like, um, you know, a young young man coming up trying to be a wannabe. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what it was. These guys was the real deal. Yeah. They was in here for this natural life, 50 to life. They was real deal. So you had to draw that line to where's that, yo, don't play with these guys. Yeah, and over some cookies. I'm saying, yeah, over some cookies. So simple, I mean, so petty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was like my first encounter of, Seeing somebody really get stabbed up or whatever the case may be, and was kind of traumatizing. Yeah, that like that that's the stuff you know. We we don't we don't ask that question to glorify, right? Yes. But it's to just show so those they, that 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 are listening so they can have a visual. That's correct. Right? Mm -hmm. right? That is the thing. There ain't no game, and inside there, you know, everybody wants to be a wolf and a sheep. Uh, be 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 a wolf. And be a gangster. When you're inside the lion's cage, everybody wants to be a lion. That's Eventually, right. somebody has to be the sheep. That's correct. Um, so, like, what what was that moment then for you? Like that, you know, how long it took you to to actually, you know, sit back and, and analyze you as a person, man. Take what I call that thorough introspection of yourself, man. Mm -hmm. Do you remember doing that in there? Yeah, I remember. Um 
couple of times I was kind of lost because, you know, they got courts in Clinton. So, you know, these guys got courts, like workout courts and stuff like that. Cooking courts. Cook, cooking courts and stuff like that. And you're not allowed on these courts. So this particular time I come to the yard, I'm not knowing about the courts because nobody really gave me the history of this. I'm just thinking I'm in the yard. I want to sit down and, you know, just watch couple of yeah, people it's see like what's seven going on. man to a court. You gotta have your name mm -hmm. on them. You gotta have your name on them. Everybody it. is it's claiming courts. They yeah. court, so yeah. you can't just go stand on anybody court because them guns will come out. It comes man. out. And, <laughs> I and mean them knives. That's what so I'm happened. talking about. <laughs> My first day in the yard, I go sit on somebody court. And it was some brothers that were standing by the shack where you go get the wood at to chop woods, because you know you could cook inside the Clinton yard in the courts or whatever. So he like, get off the court, brother. Get off the court. I'm like, what? I can sit here. You know what I'm saying? He said, get off the court. So when I looked where he was pointing at, all the way up on the hill, you had a whole group of guys standing up and looking at me down on the hill mm -hmm. on the court. court. Wow. So these are the like things that you had to catch on quick because mm -hmm. um, these guys are not going to come down and talk to me while I'm on their court. Right. You know, you don't know what they have on their court. They probably be up there and they got all the weapons down there. Yeah, they you know stash saying? your type of weapons so, on their court. So we I got mean, dirt. It's nothing but dirt, so you just put the you, knives in the you dirt really had and to dig it back your, up. Yeah, you really had to use like your, your common sense when you... You had to use your common sense because any wrong move could have caused you to get beat up, get stabbed or up, or anything life. like that. Yeah, because course. it was really intense. These guys had chips on their shoulders. If I thought I was mad, they was already mad because they already had 15 <laughs> in and they serving 50 to life. So it was yeah. really intense, man. Yeah, but yeah. I survived that. And my next spot was, I, I, I did a year there with no tickets. I, I put in for a preference transfer and I got to um, Comstock, I got to Comstock, which was Great Meadows. And it was closer to my wife at the time. You know, my first wife who I was married to, it was close to her, she was from Albany. So it was good, we got our trellis from 99 to 2004. And that's where I really got all my jewels from, Comstock. That's why I got them because that was a dumping ground for all the gangbangers mm -hmm. from Southport. The garbage can they called it, it when was, I was there. <laughs> it was the dumping. I mean, if you go into this yard, you liable to have four or five cuttings a day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, that's how intense it was. Mm -hmm. So, with that, it kind of taught me, you know, oh, you got to be you. You got to be Jamel McKnight. You can't be this image because if you be this image right here, this this shorty, they're gonna test you. Uh -huh. So. Right then and there, I just wanted to start being called Jamel or Mel. You know what I'm saying? So I left that image alone once I got to Comstock, and that was 1999. And that was a good decision for me because a lot of brothers that was there with me, I see them, you know, just before I left prison, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't do too good. Right. They stab wounds, cuts on their face, and when they look at me, they're like, yo, I, 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 I got it with you. <laughs> I had, to, I had to smarten up. I didn't want to. I didn't want to be in that crowd to wish that you're gonna catch more time on top of the time that you got because each cutting you might get a, another case, mm -hmm. a two to four, three to nine. So after you finish your 25 years, you will have to do that. And I seen brothers doing that as, as I was going to the board. Brothers couldn't go to the board because they still had other time for back in the days, cuttings and stabbings and stuff like that. Yep. And I understood where it came from, but I said to myself, Jamal, I'm glad that you kind of cleaned yourself up and now you're on a straight path of re-entry. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Absolutely. That was my experience beyond the war. So no gonna, question. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, uh, what year you came to Sing Sing, man? Oh, I came to Sing Sing 2013. I stayed for four and a half years. How left, was that experience? Oh, that was a great experience, man. I, let a, I met a lot of great brothers there. They had so many good programs there. So it was up to you what you wanted to do because that was also the underworld life where they got drugs, liquor, you know, the women, you know what I'm saying? It, it was there. Sing Sing, it was still there. It wasn't intense like back in the days when, you know, Sing Sing was Sing Sing, but it still exists. Mm -hmm. So what I did when I got to Sing Sing, because I always thought about being in Sing Sing, you know, because it was, you hear about it. It's yeah. closer to the city, 45 minutes away. Everybody wanted to be there. So what I did, was just threw myself inside the school building. Because anytime you're in the facility, if you want to do something positive, just go to the school building. Mm -hmm. You're going to meet good brothers over there. Mm -hmm. so if you want to go to the yard, you're going to meet mm -hmm. all the knuckleheads. They're going to come to the yard. They're going to look around. And every yard only got a BT TV, a Spanish TV, the weights, and the phones. Mm -hmm. So that's what we got in the yard. That's what I said. So it's nothing really in the yard. So when these guys are telling me, yo, was you coming to the yard? I'm like, bro, I'm going to the school building. 
they don't have nothing else to say beyond that because we not on two, we not on the same path. We're not on so, the same level. So I use that same method to this day, yeah. and it helps. It's a, it's a tool that I developed that helps me distinguish. I got a choice today if I want to be with the underworld life or if I want to do positive. Mm -hmm. I, I use the underworld life is because these guys are still selling drugs, scamming, cutting, whatever. It's the underworld life. Now when you got that nine to five and you're doing good things, ooh, it's beautiful. This is the path. I'm, I recommend this path for anybody. You know what I'm saying? Because we frowned on it. We see the guy with the construction, the boots. We said, oh, look at the dirty boots. Yeah. But that guy got the longevity. He had the family. He, was, he wasn't a sucker. We was a sucker sitting on a crate and all that. Mm. So I'm saying to y'all today that um, I like the nine to five, baby. You know what I'm saying? No question. That's right. Not looking behind my back and worrying about the police pulling me over, asking me um, for my license and registration when you don't have it because you're driving a stolen car or whatever. Right. So now, when I pull out that registration, that license, sure. how you doing, officer? Have a nice day. There you go. That's hey, it. Yeah. What program did you take while you was over there? Um, in Sing Sing, I took Paste. I took Paste twice, the um, Basic and Advanced. I took Exodus. I was in Exodus, but it's a different Exodus from Huli and Medina. It's still Exodus. It's, it's just, it, Huli and Medina was like a, well, they different. They two different. I know this one was started in Green Haven or whatever the case may be, but their Exodus was basically for the facility and they give you recommendations for the board and stuff like that. They do a timeline. Um, from your childhood all the way to the person who you are. So it was a good program. I took it because there was a lot of good brothers that was in there that was recommending it to me. AVP, Alternative Good Violence, life. I love that. You know what I'm saying? I took it three times. I got the, um, the basic, the advance, and I wanted to become a facilitator, but that, that didn't happen because COVID hit and then it shut down the school yeah. building or whatever the case may be. Well, I just want to shout out Pace, man. Yeah, you Pace. mentioned Pace, That's man. Right. Prisoners for AIDS, That's Counseling right. and Education. Same. Peer facilitator right, right here. Yeah. So, uh, That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 13 yeah. years I did it. 13, yeah. Uh, no um, question. They had, um, they, had, uh, they had so many programs in there. They had the Pace, they had Exodus, they had... Um, uh, what was the one that y'all was into? Another, yeah, the um, Hudson Lane. Um, Hudson Lane. Um, sure. The one that Ja came to. Uh, damn, I missed that one too, man. I wanted the six nine six B. Um, yeah, we had we had uh, transitional uh, services. They help a lot. They give you a lot of good information about what's going on in the street. We about job voices, applications. Voices from like within. That. Voices from within. Yeah, um, we created. Uh, it's so many programs, brother. Let me let me ask you this. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Cause we interview a lot of people here. And a lot of people, men and women, have been home for quite some time. What does it feel like to be home after 25 years, 30 days, one day in a wake up home? Wow, what does that still feel like for you? When you wake up in the morning and you ain't hearing clonk, 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 kill! You ain't hearing the scuffles because two room cellmates got into the blah, blah, blah. You ain't worrying about, yo, that you making a phone call. Yo, you put the money on my books. The commissary coming up tomorrow. They gave me my slip. What does that feel like to come home to this world? You got me having flashbacks. Yeah, bro. right? Because that's, <laughs> that, that's the reality yeah. that he just left no 31 question. days and a half ago. That's right. To that shit, because I know for me and I know for Eric and a lot of countless other brothers, first coming home after doing that, that long bid, that PTSD that you know you, you mentioned earlier, mental health that you still haven't addressed, that's right. right? And that's something that we, a lot of people ignore. That's correct. That's right. Most We're of us now have. just talking about and dealing with mental health as a general question of how do we see this, how do we address it, and how do we handle it. If it hasn't been for for COVID, for this whole thing, it still be unaddressed. Right, because it, it, it was considered like a plague. It was considered a leopard. Mm -hmm. If you was had some mental health, you was just bug out, you was just a sick person, nobody wanted to deal with that. So let's address that. Um, well, I would have to say, um, the question was um, how does about the mental health, right? How does, it feel from, how does it feel me being home after doing all that time? I would have to say it feel great, man. It feel great to just ride on the train, you know, be into my phone, you know, just be normal like everybody else. That's all I ever wanted to do. 
Um, I, I wanted that second chance. Like, I didn't have to do no 25 years to wake up and smell the coffee. Mm -hmm. However, that was the time that they gave me, and I had to, I had to get through it. But there was so many rough times where I just wanted to throw in the towel and just go back to the underworld life. And I had good brothers that stood around me and said, bro, that's not the way. Mm -hmm. we, 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 like these bills we have right here, these, these are therapeutic bills. That's this right. is what you need. And it's, it's like a reminder, like, bro, we better than that. Mm -hmm. you, know, they, they, you know, mass incarceration is serious because all the brothers who I was locked up with even got locked up 15, 16, 17, like 18, I don't see, it's rare that you see the 20s and the 21s or whatever, you got them in there, but yeah. I'm talking about the majority of brothers was young. Yeah. With young young yeah. men making yes. poor choices, right? Poor choices. To fit That's in right. and had to pay dearly yeah. and had to grow up in the system. That's correct. Absolutely. You know? And we all had a chip on our shoulder with this anger because we didn't address what you said, like get counseling for certain things because moms was on drugs, didn't have, it's like so much dysfunctional things that still go on after generation after generation. So me, I told my daughter the other day because, you know, she said, Daddy, you know this? I said, Sayera, you know I'm on parole and I can't move. I said, you know this. I said, the parole officer get the last say so on for anything. Um, I would love more to be with you and my grandson and my granddaughter, but I have to listen to what she's telling me. If she's telling me to go to this program and make this, I have to do that. She got kind of upset because she can't understand that while I'm home, why I can't be with her. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling her that we are gonna be together. These are the processes, these are the steps that I have to take in order to get there. Because if I don't take these state steps, which is I'm in a shelter, which is ready, willing, and able. Shout out to ready, willing, and able because they're helping brothers get on their feet if you really wanna. Yes, sir. Absolutely. They, they basically help you get all your credentials right. My birth certificate was messed up, social security, all that. I needed all that to be able to accumulate myself back into the society mm -hmm. as uh, I've been going for 25 years. I was 18, I'm 45 today. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say that these steps that I took are going down to 111 Center Street, 125th and Worth, trying to talk to these people and they looking at me like, where you come from? And the first thing to come out, like, I just came home. You know, I just came home and I'm trying to get my stuff together. So that whole process was frustrating, but I would say that it's much needed. You mm -hmm. have to do it. Mm -hmm. You have to do it. You have to get on the train, ask people, excuse me, sir, you know how to get to 125th Street? Mm -hmm. Or boom, boom, boom. Because we was, we was taken out of society for so long that we lost that, that feeling of being normal. Because everything that we did in there was pretty much abnormal. Yeah. Being around a whole bunch of men, not being, not holding your baby, not seeing dogs. Now I see the dog, man, hey, how you doing? You got a cute dog right there. I just do things, browse through the stores. People just looking at me, it's, it feels so good to be out here. I'm not going back. Everything is positive and productive from here on out. That's what I recommend. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure you have some hopes and dreams. That's what correct. is it that you really want to do how do you feel that you can play your part into giving back to a community um, that you caused so much havoc for when you were the kid, right? Making these bad choices. Well, as a husband, a father, and a grandfather today, I would say that everything that I do now is gonna be on the strength of making sure that my grandkids don't have to go through what me and my daughters went through. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm trying to explain to my daughter. I said that you endured some hardship as well, not having your father for 25 years, and I understand that. I said, but it's not about me no more, and it's not about you, it's about them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We gotta fix this generation right here. So with that being said, um, a couple of projects that I got, I got one called One to 44. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a podcast called One to 44, and the reason why I named it that is because I'm gonna give the history of who Jamel McKnight all the way into the time they let me out. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Well, I, I, I want to get I, I, that whole segment. Also, you know, shout out to um, Neshe Walker, soon to be McKnight. She's mm -hmm. still my wife. I like that. Of course. Okay, she the one okay. that shout made Neshe. Yeah. Holding it down. Yeah. Because she hear my dreams and aspirations and all that, and she made it possible for me to walk out the door with my own clothing line, which is called Priceless Clothing Gear and Accessories. Can you, um, can you say that again? Say it again to the mic so everybody can hear so we could support that. 
priceless clothing gear and accessories. Who made it um, accessible? Who made that for you? Um, Neshe. Neshe is my fiance, soon to be my wife. Um, and she, she, she seen my dream and she wanted to make it come true. So for our, um, for our anniversary, that was one of the things that she got started for me. I came home with that. And um, the other thing is, they got something called, well, it's, this, is, this is not out there yet, brother. This is all in the making, so just bear with me. But it's called Trendsetters. And Trendsetters is gonna be about losing the image. Because you got all these guys that their names is bang them up, shoot them up, kill them up, mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. But they don't wanna talk about who's Jamel McKnight or who's Anthony or who, who's, who's these names. They live in this image. So yeah. the kids is still seeing the image that they live in. Mm -hmm. So Trendsetters is gonna be a place where you can be you. Mm. And you can lose the image. Oh, I love that. I love that. Let me, so, let me yeah. give that. Uh, and, 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 and real quick, the reason why yes. I, I, I okay. love that because you hit you you hit that right on the nose. Like we we grew up with a nickname and we have to live up to that moniker of that nickname, right? Which comes with a whole lot of freaking troubles, trauma, and yes, we got we got to let that go sometimes. Yes. If you go by the name of Two Gun, they everybody expect you to carry yeah, Two Gun and yeah. shoot, right? right? If you want to be named Blood Banger, you're gonna be have blood and banging people. So, yo, shout out for that for that vision, right? Oh, because sure, I guys. think the growth and development comes with let's start changing how we perceive ourselves, right? In order for other people to see us as we want them to see yeah, us, like that, yeah, sure. right? And who we truly are. Yeah. All right, Absolutely. and so man, with that, brother, like, listen, yo, thank you, man, for your coming through. Yo, I appreciate y'all, man. Like, like, Success like, after bro. lockdown, man. And, and, and Combat and gun violence, man. We here. Right. We're here, baby. Who better? Who better, who better right? to get this out? Right? Us, man. And listen, like, we've been there, we've done that, right? And for the little young brothers out there, man, like, you don't have to go and spend 15, 20, 25, 30, 40 years of the rest of your life in, in prison because you're trying to impress somebody or trying to fit in, mm. right? Yes. Come on. No question. You hear it from us and first. Look forward to, and I look forward to, you know, success after lockdown, us working with you in the future. You know uh, what I mean? Yes. Our future you know, endeavors, that, man, man. man. Combat and gun violence, combat man. Combat and gun violence. I love this, right, this movement. Everybody that I come in contact with, I say, check out success after lockdown, man. This is what <laughs> we about. You know what I'm saying? Brothers is coming, trying to mend their life back together, and I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah man, man, and listen, man, big shout out Thank to you again for coming out, man. Thank you for having me, man. Big, 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 absolutely, my brother. Big shout out to Naysay. Yeah, I'm man, big shout, shout out to holding him down. To Julio Medina, to Exodus Production yes. Studio, for always allowing us full yeah, access, man, here to do what we do. To everyone that's out there that's tuning in, that's following us, let we your shout people out to know. our camera man, yeah. our camera man, uh, Arthur, uh, man. Uh, Arthur, <laughs> yeah. producer, producer, the producer. How dare you for our camera man? That's right. How dare you? I just see right, camera. Big, so. <laughs> big, 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 big shout out though, man. To, to everybody that's a part of this, to everybody that's out there that's listening, please let someone know. You never know that somebody can share a story in here that can make a positive impact and a decision someone is gonna make that won't be able to come back from it, man. So tune in to our YouTube, Spotify, Anchor, Apple Podcast, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? On Success After Lockdown, feel free to follow, subscribe, drop a comment. If you Instagram. wanna go. Um, Facebook. And, yeah, oh, yeah, you everybody already know Thugs Revenge, Coward's Nightmare. I'm working on a new book mm -hmm. um, called Incarcerated Freedom. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just talking about more of my life and how I found freedom while incarceration because I found myself mm -hmm. and I realized that I didn't have to live up to the street moniker of Scarface, that I could yeah. really be mm -hmm. Anthony. That's, That's cool. another episode. Um, you can drop us an email at successafterlockdown at gmail.com. Uh, with any comments, you know what I mean? We're here, man, to take everything, every question, every advice, just to do something that's better for the community and show that just because we committed something bad in the past doesn't have to dictate our future, and that's not who we are today. Change is possible. Absolutely. With that, my brother Eric. But all I got to say, man, is stop wasting time, man. Mm -hmm. Let's get it, man. Let's, Let's get it. Let's Peace. Get it. Man. So, any, anything you got to say more quick to the people out there? I would just like to say, man, thank y'all for having me. Success after lockdown. Um, Julio Medina for making all this possible. This is beautiful right here, man. I'm sitting in this chair. 
next to my boy, I got goosebumps in me right now, man. Yeah. I love this. Bro, look, I just gotta say this to y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, what we mad at, man? We just killing each other for what? Mm. Like, you just look at me, you just mad at me, you wanted to shoot me, kill me? I said, bro, man, something have to happen, man. Some, somebody gotta get the word out. We gotta, this is, it's getting, little kids is getting control. shot in their head. I got grandkids now. Yeah. So I see it from a different point of view. I didn't see it when I was younger. But if I could say anything to anybody out there, I just say this, man. Love each other, man. You know what I'm saying? Love each other, man. We don't have to hate each other. Just love each other, man. And yes. You always tell me family first, man. And love is free. Love is free. And with that, everybody, yo, stay up. God bless. Keep it positive. You already know, man. Success after lockdown. Another beautiful episode. Take care, people. Boom.